Target. This is Roscoe, and this is Roscoe, and uh, Xena's Roadmap to Success. Xena's a very fearful dog, and let's go ahead and pan the camera and just shoot her real quick so we can have a little bit of Xena on film. Yeah, Xena, what a beautiful girl. Xena's very fearful of new people. I'm pretty sure she has a lot of cortisol in her blood, which is the stress hormone, and so everything is amplified. When a guest comes over, she's just, it's kind of like if you're in line at a haunted house, or if you're walking down a dark alley and you hear footsteps behind you, your spidey sense kicks in. That helps you in a short, limited period of time, but if it's in your body, uh, blood for too long, that can actually lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, just like humans. And so um, I really haven't worked with her very much. A lot of what I was doing was tossing treats to get her walking towards me, taking the treat and walking away. Once I tossed the treat, I didn't say a word about it. She saw me do it. She screwed up enough courage herself. But if I said, come and get the treat, come and get the treat, I'm try she thinks I'm going to try to trick her. So when you have guests come in, I would just have the guest ignore her completely. I would get one of these, load it full of the treats, and give it to your guest so that, so that she starts associating. And also, I don't know if you know this for Roscoe, but I had this thing right here, clips on your belt. So every, sit. Every time I reach like this, he knew what was going on. Oh, he's going for the treats. So this becomes almost like a signal. Now, I'm going to talk about him and, and the stuff we went over in this, uh, in this session real quick. But first of all, I'm going to talk about some stuff for her. Now, if you're on my website, there's a dog named Maple, M-A-P-L-E, um, that I just worked with. It'll be like probably one or two uh, uh, below this on doggunproblems.com. Um, I did a whole video on how to have guests come over because it's a standard poodle, a dark brown one that just barks and doesn't like Kind of similar things to Xena. And so basically what, what I did is I, I had some high value treats when I came in. I dropped one every other step as I walked in the room. And then she came up behind and licked up those treats. Then I sat down in the, on the chair and I ignored her. I didn't look at her. I didn't talk to her. I didn't try to pet her. And then I basically did the same sort of thing, throwing the treats, getting her to come closer and closer. Now at first, I'm, let's say the dog is 10 feet away. I might throw it five feet. If the dog won't come at five feet, then I might throw it six feet, seven feet. I keep on until the dog, if the dog, all it does is lean forward and take a treat, that's at least some progress. Then eventually I'd want one step, then two steps, then three steps, and eventually coming all the way towards me and walking away. But I'm not trying to pet her or give her any encouragement. She just wanted her to do it. Now, a lot of dogs will lean. Looks like they're stealing base, their legs out behind them. That's a good indication that a dog doesn't feel comfortable yet. And so you want to keep on doing this until the dog no longer leans. Sit. Sit. Anytime you give a treat, make sure you give, say the command word immediately after the treat goes in the mouth, not the same time and not before. Um, so the idea for her is she's a pro practicing coming and going, good things happening. Um, and then eventually when she comes close enough, what I would want to do is hold my hand out to the side like this with my palm up, let her lick, my hand, lick it off my hand, and he hasn't moved his hand away, uh, but I hold my hand here even if he pulled his head away. Now he's licking because I've got a whole bunch of treats. But if you just hold your hand, or I've had, and it's got a scent. But if you hold your hand out, a lot of times they'll lick it once and they're like, did I miss something? And come back and they get an extra dose of encountering you. Dogs should meet by smell, not by their eyes. And that's what she's doing. She's meeting through her eyes. Sit. Sit. Remember to always pet on the chin and say just the command word. Just sit. Not good sit. Not Roscoe sit. Not what a pretty sitter. Just sit. Um, now, uh, we can also set Xena up for success. Before a guest comes over, we should exercise her. Um, I talked about some creative ways of exercising a dog. One of the things we talked about was the, using the laser, throwing the treats up and down the stairs. Playing fetch is a wonderful way to burn energy. Um, also, uh, scent games. His nose is not as good as hers. And also, uh, natural dog company. Get some of the nose balm for him. It'll help with, the, with what's going on. I know, yeah, your nose got a little bit jacked up with a fight between the two of you. But um, if we can get a little bit of that for him, that might, that might help, especially this time of the year. We have our furnaces on. It really dries out dogs. Um, okay, so um, setting her up for success by getting her some exercise. And another thing you can do is, I didn't do it here because it's cold out, but taking the, meeting the dog outside. So when you have guests come over, a great thing might do might be to have uh, the guest be outside and have the guest, when the guest gets here, ask them to come and be standing like next in front of your neighbor's house. Then you put Xena on the walk, uh, on the leash, and you walk down. And at first, you know, if she's reacting, barking, have that person walk in the street. And if this is the sidewalk, Roscoe, you're making this difficult, buddy. Let me put the treats away. <laughs> uh, so we want to do like what we call parallel rocking, almost like at, at a triangle. So we, we're going to walk at whatever distance we need to get apart for, where she stops barking. And then dogs process things by literally moving forward. So as we walk forward, we maybe have it more of a diagonal shape. So eventually we get close together. Yes, I knew you were going to do that. So eventually we get to the point where we can be walking next to each other. And so she gets to meet them outside. 
Um, sometimes I'll do the same sort of thing. I do this several times in uh, my accounts in uh, Los Angeles, where before the dog comes out, I put a breadcrumb of treats from their door like every other square, and then I'm sitting down. The dog walks up to me, it's getting treat, 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 and then I hold my hand out to the side, and the dog licks it up. Oh, this smells like the same treat. And so the dog gets comfortable. Are we still going? Okay. Um, and so uh, we're creating that positive association. And then going for a little walk. It doesn't have to be a marathon walk. Maybe we just have the dog walk with us three houses down, cross the street, walk three houses back, and then come inside. Now the dog has an experience meeting someone where there's a lot of sights and sounds of distractions of being outside. We create a lot of positive association with the treat. And again, the best thing the guests can do is completely ignore the other dog. Don't look at her, don't try to talk to her, wait for her to come to you. And when she starts coming to your side and taking the treat, make sure you just keep on holding the treat out to the side until she comes and, and lingers. And ideally, what we'd like to see her do is sit and lay down in the room. Now, the dogs, because they, uh, they had some fights, the guardians are really looking for, to remove any sort of uh, sort, a sense of uh, anything that might be instigating or causing it. So a lot of the chew items, because Xena likes to claim them and take them from him, um, and the guardians were worried that was going to create a fight. I would really go the other direction. I would get so many that it's not even worthwhile claiming because they're just everywhere. But dogs, when they get stressed out, they need to chew. And so I think she's, I can tell that she's very stressed out. And right now she's stressed out and her guardian is petting her. And her guardian means the best. But what we're going to do is she can lay her hand on the Xena's back right now and let her know I'm here with you without amplifying it. But it's the most common mistake people make as humans is try to pet the dog to let the dog know it's okay, it's okay. We're going to amplify it. Now, in this case, I think uh, uh, part of this happened because of socialization, some other things, but really the dogs don't have a lot of rules. And, they're, and, they're, and so that confuses dogs oftentimes in thinking we're both peers, we're both at the same level. Well, then I'm gonna try to outshine you, and the other dog tries to outshine. She's the older dog, but he's the young one full of beans. And so we have the dogs competing to be, uh, uh, to be not in balance and competing by doing the wrong things. Um, so we want to incorporate rules and boundaries and structures so the dogs start to see the humans acting like leaders so they feel like they're followers and they're not responsible for making sure everything's okay. Now I'm going to pivot back to Xena one last time before we continue. Is One of the things I like to, uh, the guardians do is teach her how to catch. I don't know if she knows how to catch, does she? She does, okay. So when she knows how to catch, that was, get in a habit of playing a game of playing catch with her. And most people go one, two, and then a third, the dog's looking around and hits their head. So uh, if your dog doesn't know how to catch, what I do is put the dog about 10 feet away, throw a treat just with the one first toss and try to make it so good, all the dog has to do is open his mouth and goes in the mouth. Let's say the word catch or reception or whatever you want to say when the dog gets it. And then if it hits the, ground, hits the nose and hits the ground, the person next to the dog should pick it up. You have a really long, wow, really long toes. Uh, pick it up and give it back to the person. The only way the dog gets it is by cra uh, crash, is by snatching it out of the air. This is a great game for her to eventually be able to play with the guests. So when you do the walk outside, come inside, they drop treats, then they sit down, and when she's starting approaching and she's sitting in the room with you and laying down, that's when it'd be nice for the person to reach out the treat pouch and start playing catch with her. So now she gets to interact with guests at whatever distance she feels comfortable with. There's positive reinforcers involved, and she feels uh, eventually she gets a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Now, a very common mistake a lot of people make when they have a dog that's growling is to correct the dog or chastise the dog or get upset with the dog. A growl is the antithesis of aggression. It's really saying, I'm uncomfortable with whatever's going on. If we don't listen to the dog and create a scenario where they're like, okay, I don't have to protect myself, my humans, I growl and they get me out of that situation. Well, then the dog thinks it has to take care of itself. So one of the things I talked to the guardians about was teaching her an away command. And it's a very simple way to do it. Every time she's in the room, or she doesn't have to just be growling. I would prefer to actually teach her without, she, without her growling. So if she's in the room, and let's say she's staring at Roscoe, just, just pull up, hold the treat, throw it behind her, and when she walks away to get it, say the word away, or flee, or distance, or whatever you want to word, a one word command. So then that way when this, this is going on, you can actually tell her distance and give her a command, and she knows at least to move away. It doesn't necessarily mean she wants to. That's gonna be the enforcement of rules and structure uh, consistently. So uh, basically, uh, teach her to catch and teach her to move away on command will be very beneficial for her. Uh, okay, so let's, let's talk about other things we went over. We went over flipping the leader-follower dynamic by enforcing rules consistently. Uh, some of the rules I suggest is not being allowed to be on the furniture for 30 days or as long as the problem's going on. My clients only hear 30 days. It might be never that they're on the furniture, again. But when they, if it is, it's with an invitation. It's a one-time exception only for good behavior. If they're on the furniture, I want them to get down. I would throw the treat on the ground. When the dog jumps down to get it, I would say the word off. 
Now be careful if you throw a treat and they both go together, that might create a fight. I don't think that you guys are gonna have that problem with it. You guys are very aware of that. Now I also like to give my dogs directional commands to like to leave the room. Let's say this is a doorway and I want Roscoe to leave the room. Well, if I haven't first taught him what leaving the room means, it's hard for me to communicate that. It's really easy to give your dog directional commands. So what I do is I take this, I throw it just in the hallway right outside the room. He goes and gets it and I would say the word out. And he's gonna come back and I would do, the second, do it a second time. I would do this every doorway or portal in your house. Um, we also talked about one of the rules not being allowed on the red carpet around the couch. So if he's on the red carpet, touch his nose and throw it on the, on the cream colored carpet. He goes out, we say the word uh, out. So the, off to get off the furniture or out to leave the area. After a while, then we have creative vocabulary. Doesn't mean he wants to do it. That's the rules and uh, the rules and structure we're gonna talk about in a sec. But now we've at least taught him what we want. Sit. That was that was very tardy, but that's how we do. Uh, that's called uh, passive training, which we're also gonna talk about in a sec. So some of the rules we talked about. Um, uh, a couple of them. Uh, well, one other one is you have to sit before I let you in or out of a door. Um, I go to the door, I say sit once, the dog doesn't sit, I walk away, I wait one minute, ask this little device here to give me a 60 second timer, and then go back to the door and command it again. This time if it doesn't sit, I walk away with two minutes, for two minutes, then for four minutes, then for eight minutes. If I say sit and he sits and she doesn't, I would let him out and not let her out. So I'm gonna pay the dogs based on their particular performance. And eventually they'll go sit at the door as their way of saying I'd like to go outside. Um, another rule would be uh, the human should need to eat something before they feed the dogs. Um, the dogs eat in the order of their rank. Now, what I would do is I would put the, do you feed them in the kitchen? So I would, I would make sure both dogs are out of the kitchen, then go in there and prepare their food bowls, and if they try to come in, stand up and walk directly at the dog. Now be careful with them together, you might want to practice and establish this at one at a time. So dogs stand, uh, standing up is your army business position, and your authority goes whatever direction your hips and shoulders are pointing at. Right now my authority is pointing here. There's a difference between this and this, so make sure you're crisp. Um, and so if the dog comes in the threshold, you would walk directly at the dog. Now, if you go to doggoneproblems.com and you just search for uh, uh, invisible boundaries or establishing boundaries or invisible line, I have a bunch of videos where I show people how to train their dog to, to stay away from a table or whatever it is. So just go to doggoneproblems.com, click on dog training tips. On the right side of the page, there's a little search box at the top, type in invisible. Several examples will come up. So um, one of the rules would be not being allowed to be on the red carpet if there's somebody here who is eating food in the living room. And uh, so this is just for you guys. Uh, I mean, uh, and then, uh, so what I would do is first teach the dog to leave the room with, without the presence of any food. And once the dog knows what that command is, gassy. Uh, then the next command, uh, stage would be to practice. So what I would do is I'd get a piece of bacon, microwave it, come and sit down here. Now normally when we're eating, we're putting food in our mouth. We're just, that's where our priority is. We're late on correcting the dogs. Remember you have three seconds to correct or reward the dog. So what I do is I microwave a piece of bacon and sit down and pretend like I'm cooking. If the dog crosses the threshold under the red carpet, I stand up and march at the dog to make it move away. And the other steps that'll be in that video. And then eventually when the dog sits or lies down outside the boundary, then I put the bacon away, then I serve my actual meal. For, uh, do you guys ever eat here? Yes. So if you're eating here, I'd imagine there's a line coming from this wall, kind of on the other side of the Christmas tree, and the dog's not allowed to cross this line or come through the kitchen. So that way you guys establish another boundary. And you are in practicing and acting like a leader by enforcing those rules. So eventually you get to the point where the dog stays outside the line. Now I would do the same sort of thing for eating there. For the kitchen is another rule. I don't let dogs in the kitchen when we're preparing food, but when we're, just, when we're cooking, we're distracted. So again, microwave a piece of roast beef, put it on the counter. The dog just smells, because it smells like we're, we're cooking, it tries to come in. We stop and we correct the dog. Then we go back to pretending like we're cooking. We bang pots and pans around, pull stuff out of the fridge, and we simulate cooking. And as soon as the dog crosses the threshold, we enforce it. And when the dogs relax, we stop. And then basically, eventually, when they sit or lie down outside the kitchen, then we can actually put that away and cook our real meal. Now, when you're feeding them, I didn't finish that. So uh, when you're feeding them, put food in their bowl, make them leave the kitchen first. And when you're walking away from the door, keep walk backwards because your authority, if you make them walk away, then you turn, go this way, your authority is now pointing away from the dogs. Take a step backwards, pause. Take a step backwards, pause. The pause is to make sure the dog is listening to you. Dogs communicate with a single movement when they're communicating with each other. So by taking a step backwards and pausing, you're saying, look, I'm not just backing up. I'm saying I want you to stay where you're at. And if the dog tries to come forward, you rush towards them. You stop wherever the line is. That's how you enforce an invisible line. So once the dogs are staying outside the kitchen and you're putting food down, and again, you might have to practice them one at a time, probably advised, then go get a chip or cracker or something you can eat in five or more bites. When you get done, invite the dog to come over and eat. 
Now I'd give each dog a separate command word. Maybe uh, each one of you comes up with your favorite food dish or favorite restaurant. So let's say that uh, Papagayo, or let's, that's too hard, let's say... Uh, lasagna. Yeah, you could say lasagna. So <laughs> every time he takes his first bite of food, we say lasagna for two months. When he hears the word lasagna, there's food in his mouth. The context is lasagna means I eat. When the other dog, when uh, Zena hears lasagna, there's no food in her mouth. So it doesn't have the same connotation. So eventually when, he gets, when he's eating, Zena's not allowed in the kitchen. And then as soon as he gets done eating, he walks away from his bowl. He doesn't do this, but if he were to leave food in his bowl, we'd pick it up and dump it and put an empty bowl back down. He'd usually come and lick the empty bowl. Then he has to leave the area. Then we invite Zena in. When Zena's in, he's not allowed to be in the kitchen. This way, both dogs see us acting like leaders. My feet are gonna go to sleep if I don't move them. Uh, but we, the dogs see both of us acting like leaders by having his back and by having her back. Even though he wants to go stand next to her food and try to dominate, that way, if he keeps her from eating his, her food, he is more uh, status. Also, he probably wants to steal her food because he's a, he's a big eater. And so he's kind of, I don't want to say teasing because that's the wrong context. Dogs don't do that intentionally. But they are going to posture and see what they can get away with. And our job as is, is a leader is to say, nope, that's not allowed. Leave the area. Um, now, if he's, his job is to eat first, but let's say that he's barking and putting up a fuss, I might change the order and invite her to come in and eat if she's being well behaved. But again, for you guys initially, what I would do is I would feed them separately. Uh, okay, so those are uh, some examples of rules. Um, trying to think. Make sure that neither one of them goes in front of you, out the door, or downstairs, or into a room. If you're walking them, uh, I like them all walking at a heel uh, without one person walking in front of them. If you have questions about this stuff, you can always call or text me after the fact. So please don't worry about it. Um, but when you're walking them, if either one is in front, then the other one's going to try to be in front, and then you have the pulling situation. So um, that's something I like these dogs to do. These dogs need to start doing some things together that are positive. Right now, they're just spending a lot of time apart. The guardians are nervous when they're together because there have been, they've been some fights, and that tension from the guardians can actually amplify, amplify things. So even if it's just a walk, and if we have to, just have each dog have a handler and put human, human, shoulder, shoulder, and the two dogs on the outside. Nobody's in front, nobody's behind. Um, and I'd like to see that happen at least once a day. It doesn't have to be a marathon walk. Just around the block is fine, but they need to have a positive experience multiple times. And if there is a fight, we need to separate them, we need to calm them down, then we'd like to get them out walking as soon as possible after the fight. Make sure they're calm first. That's the most important priority. But you might have to do it where like one of you in the street and one of you is on the sidewalk or one of you is on the lawn and the people's lawns, whatever. But we need them to practice that immediately afterwards. The last memory engram is not of the fight because um, that will go into the long-term memory and that makes it harder. Um, the other thing we want to do is have them practice being together in a positive way so they have start building up some positive credits. And one, oh, we both saw that squirrel. We both would have kicked that squirrel's butt if we weren't on the leash. So now they have common bonding things. And like I said earlier, dogs process things by literally moving forward. Um, okay, so um, we also went over uh, structure. Petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is if the dog initiates contact with me, it invades my space, it nudges me, it barks at me, it paws at me for attention. If I do what the dog wants and give it some attention, that's going to cause the dog to do it again. So instead, when the dog comes up and nudges me or barks at me, I'm going to tell them, give the dog a counter order, tell it to sit. When it sits, I'm going to pet it under its chin, say the word sit, and only the word sit. And then I can pet it for as long as I want after that. If it's already sitting here, ask him to sit over here or ask it to lay down. It has to do something to change its state in order to earn that affection. After a while, the dog will start sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. When it does, make sure you recognize or reward that. Otherwise, it'll go back to doing other things like we talked about. Any attention is validating. A lot of dogs pull the the bed or the rip the sheet or do whatever it is because that gets our attention and they come and sit in front of us, we ignore them. So after a while, the dog will come sit in front of us to prepay for attention. So make sure we do recognize that because that's a desired action or behavior. Now, if we come in the room and we see one of us is petting the dog and the dog's standing, we might assume the other person is petting without a purpose. I usually like to say the word paycheck. The other person cannot argue and it's not busted. It's made, hey babe, I think you might've forgotten. The other person says, stops petting, tells the dog to sit, pets it under his chin, whenever possible, and says sit, and then says, actually, when you flush the toilet, I continue petting, and David said it's a lot, which it is. But you just won't realize how often you do it. Now, passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you behavior. I should have done it here. So when the dog sits on its own, I pet it and say sit. I didn't offer it, I didn't entice it, it just did it on its own, but as soon as it did that, it got a reward. Every time the dog lays down, I pet it and say crash. If you want to change a word, just say it during the command stage. If a dog knows a command, I say the word twice. I say sit, 
to tell the dog what to do. When it sits, I pet it and I say the word sit to associate the command word with the reward, which is very important. So I really say it twice. Now, if you're doing passive training and the dog doesn't know the command, let's say you want to teach him how to, how to lay on his side like this. Well, he lays down, we pet him and say crash. And then when he lays on the side like this, then we pet him and say flop within that three second window. So after a while, you say flop and he'll start flopping on his side. Every time your dog stretches, pet him and say stretch. Every time, like I said, get a whole bunch of new, to uh, new toys. But if they have specific toys, maybe one's shaped like a zebra, every time he brings a zebra, pet him and say zebra. Create a vocabulary for that as well. Speaking of vocabulary, Zena agrees. Uh, speaking of vocabulary, that's just Zena, buddy. Yes. Um, I'd like the guardians to come up with funny command words because there's a little bit of tension just because we're worried about the dogs. And so if we come up with fun command words, that can really help. Now, if I want to change it, I, I can say, hey, sit, salute, or whatever the word is I want to do. So I say sit, he knows what sit is. I'm going to change it on the reward stage. Focus. That's very good. He's already starting to stare at Xena a little bit. So I'm just kind of manipulating him to get him away from staring at her. And this is where you where use the focus exercise command. He doesn't know it quite well enough to usually to use it this well yet. Make sure you get to that end of the week before you start trying to use it in that capacity. Um, there you go, buddy. Um, and she's coming to hang it out, which is awesome. Um, so basically, um, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'd like the dogs to have so many toys, like I said, that it's not an issue about her guarding them. Because if she takes one of his, he's like, well, there's 23 other ones to grab. So, so trying to get a couple, maybe ask for some for Christmas from the holiday uh, or your Hanukkah or whatever you guys celebrate. Uh, those are great things. Antlers, I like to get elk, elk or deer antlers for them uh, about that long. Get a water buffalo horns. I would get at least two. They're expensive, but they will probably outlast your dogs. Uh, they're really durable. Just make sure they're either solid or the walls of it are pretty thick. Otherwise, they'll snap them. They'll smell kind of nasty for a couple days, but after about a week, you won't smell them only when they're wet. After a week, you won't smell anymore, but it's a really robust toy. Um, also getting them Nyla bones of different shapes and sizes. Everybody gets one that looks like the cartoon skeleton bone. I have one that's like a kind of circle with a bunch of nubs on it. I, I have several that are the letter Y. I have one that's uh, a dinosaur, one that's like a forearm that people think is an adult toy. Um, just having a whole, and they come in like different flavors, barbecue. Uh, the chi don't get the chicken one, it tastes like everything. But no, there's barbecue, there's bacon, there's a whole bunch of different flavors. And giving them those things can, is another great way to distract them. Now keep an eye out for the stairs, because like I said, that is the first thing. So if you see the stair, if you have that focus command in, in hand, you can go ahead and use that. Now if you ever see your dog's tail between its legs, it's very insecure. Never pet a dog when that's the case. If Xena is growling, again, throw that treat away from her. Create that strong away command so he can just, she's grumbling, you say away, and she just turns and leaves the room. We would prefer not to have her leave the room because that's kind of antisocial behavior, but if something's in the room she just disagrees with, we want her to feel empowered to move away on her own so that she can handle the situation, doesn't have to worry about the humans doing it. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, petting with a purpose and passive training. Out of all the things I go over, they're the things that most people skip over because they seem super simple. My whole process is designed on things repeated over and over again. We pet our dogs over and over throughout the day. If you get in a habit of exclusively petting with a purpose, and passively training your dog by every time the dog lays down, you put it and say down or whatever the word is. After a while, you'll do it without even thinking. And every time you do it, it becomes a micro dog training session that happens without even thinking about it. It truly becomes a gift. Now, if I want him to SIT, you're not gonna go get that? Go get it. I use a hand motion. My hand is empty right now, but it looks like it's full. I go in an arc over his head. And once he sits, I lower it and I lick, and I, uh, well, not lick, but I scratch him under his chin. That focuses that nose up orientation we talked about. And so that way, um, <coughs> sit. And again, we don't want to disagree with that. She's saying, I disagree. Um, but that's a nice way to manipulate him. The guardians, uh, one of the guardians I saw manipulating him physically, she wasn't doing it abusively, but it can create a resentment. And dogs have what's called an opposition reflex. That's very good. Yeah. See, if we can get Zena on camera. Um, and so basically the more, nope, she's like, nope, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with that. That's okay. Um, and like I said, it's going to be a process for her. So don't worry about it and try it. Don't force her. Don't make her go faster than her pace. That'll, that'll exasperate things. We want her to feel good so that I can, so she feels empowered that she can do it on her own. 
Um, uh, the other thing I went over was a touch exercise. So we're doing the touch, flash your hand, doesn't go for it, I pull it back. And once you flash, keep this hand frozen, move the treat to that hand. Eventually you can go like this, not quite, not quite there yet. But eventually you can go like this and the dog comes to it and you can manipulate the dog and position around or use this as an alternative way of recalling the dog. Now, uh, uh, Zena does not like to come in from inside. The guardians have kind of tricked her at times and so that kind of breaks the trust. So every time she comes to you, make sure you pet her and say the word come. And if you've been using the word come a lot, you might want to change it to here. Sometimes changing up a new command can help the dog come up with a different association so they feel a little bit more comfortable about things. Um, and, uh, and if we're outside, if she won't come to you, is it when she's outside you she won't come? Yeah. So what I would do, and if she comes over here, just tilt the camera, just, just wait. Um, what I would do is um, go out when she's out there, have a couple high value treats, walk in the middle of the yard and just stand there. Don't ask for her to come, ignore her. You're gonna stay here, buddy. And eventually she's gonna to come to you. When she comes to you, give her a treat, say the word here, and then turn around and go back inside. Let's say you walk 20 paces to get there. Well, the next time after, when you walk out there, walk 19 paces and do the same thing. Just wait, when she comes to you, give her the treat and don't say anything, and then we'll go back inside. And eventually, 17, 16, 15, eventually you'll be right at the front door. Come here, buddy, sit, sit. And she'll be right at the front door and then sometimes you toss the treat inside and say in. How about we get it down so you don't stare at Zena? <coughs> see, Zena is, uh, I can stare at myself. <coughs> uh, but basically, we're conditioning the dog that when you come to me, it doesn't mean the end of playtime necessarily. It just means come to me and get a reward. Now, at this point, it's been about three hours. She's stressed out. She doesn't like having somebody here. So she, we're not seeing her at her best. Um, and she's a great dog. I'm looking at her now. She's a really good looking dog. Uh, and I think the guardians now know that the, what they're going to need to do in order to help her feel comfortable and get over these fears. Now, if you, this stuff continues in about a month, she just laid down in the room. This is also a really good sign. Sitting and laying down are good indicators that the dog feels comfortable. The best thing she can do is sit and turn her back to somebody. That's really, um, but when she does come up and she flips over right away, make sure we stop, don't pet her, or if we're petting her and she flips over, she does it very gradually, I'm relaxed, I want you to pet my belly, that's different. But if she flips over, stop petting her right away. Um, for him, every time he puts his paw on your arm, immediately stop petting him. As soon as they start barking, stop engaging with them. This is one of the best things you can do to teach the dog that you don't like what they're doing is by stopping engagement. We don't yell at them, we don't punish them, they just stop getting our affection. Um, and also playing a little hard to get, especially for you, um, just like, uh, yeah, I, could, I could care less if you come or not. You know, if you come, I got treats. If not, I'm a woman of the world. I got things to do. It doesn't bother me. No skin off my nose. We always say, come, come here, come here, over here, over here. Then we're just making the dog to be the leader. All right, uh, anything else I forgot that you want to go over? So. If you have questions, make sure you call or text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going great. This is Roscoe, and way over there in the dark is Zena. Oh, you won't be able to see her anyways. That's Zena. And, <laughs> and this is their roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you meet him. <laughs>